is the CEO of Veros Real Estate Solutions. We also have Fred Glick. He is the CEO and president of U.S. Loans, Mortgage, and U.S. Spaces. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, Fred, let me start with you. What do you think of the data that's out there? Where are we in the cycle? Well, I think we're at the flat line, and we're going to be here for a while. Uh, the idea is that there are some micro markets, certain areas that people want to live in, have jobs in, want to be at, and there's certain places that are just awful. There's all the foreclosures that are, will still be coming. And until the jobs all balance out and the fact that people are okay with renting, we're not yeah. going to see any massive recovery anytime soon. Darius, you know, when you look at the data, it really seems like it's seesawing. Is it getting better or worse out there? The data actually is getting better. We are seeing uh, some gradual improvement. But as Fred mentioned, you got to look at the local area. So you have areas uh, mostly in the middle of the country that did not experience huge run up like you saw in the coastal areas. You look at areas like uh, Bismarck, uh, where unemployment uh, is very low and housing supply is low as well. And they're doing quite well. But on those coastal areas, they're still suffering and they will suffer for some time. Fred, you are a licensed mortgage broker. I heard from another guest today who said that it is still impossible to get financed out there. Are the banks lending? Is it harder or easier than it was six months ago? Well, let me put it this way. It's not the banks. It's the fact that Fannie, Freddie, FHA, and VA have rules. And it's more or less an interpretation of the rules by different lending institutions. I could go one place with one of my clients and they could get rejected, whereas I could go another place and get them approved for very stupid things. But, of course, as we all know, the pendulum has swung from if you can breathe, you get in, to okay, we're going to investigate everything you've ever done for the last 75 years and you better be right-handed on Thursday or we're not going to give you the loan. Yeah. But good people, good amount down, you can still get in. I've still been doing 95% loans for people with great credit scores. We're properties appraised. We have the appraisal problems. We have the fact that things are more expensive right now in terms of the cost of the consumer yeah. when, in fact, everything was supposed to be less. Darius, you made a list of the five best and worst markets for real estate right now. Give me your best. Best right now are areas uh, in that middle. Uh, so Bismarck uh, is doing very well. Wichita Falls, Texas is doing very well. Uh, surprisingly, areas like Honolulu, Anchorage, Alaska, they're all doing very well. And again, the theme in all of those top markets are the same. Uh, unemployment, if you look at the average of the top uh, five best uh, performing markets on a go forward basis, the average unemployment rate is around 6%, significantly below the national average of 9.2. Uh, on the flip side, you look at the worst uh, performing markets and unemployment is almost double that, around 12%, significantly higher than the, uh, the national average. So you think the main driver on this list that we're looking at right now, where you have Reno as the worst, Boise as the second, Portland, Oregon, Orlando, and Las Vegas, I look at a place like Las Vegas, it's about employment, it's not about how much the run-up was in these places in the first place? Well, the run-up certainly uh, uh, sets a, a, a larger fall, if you will. So there's a longer way to fall. But the two key drivers are unemployment and housing supply. And the housing supply feeds into what you're referring to in terms of that run-up. Yeah. So there were huge run-ups in those areas. We have an overstock of housing that we have to work through. And then there's the other issue uh, that people are talking quite a bit, uh, and that's the shadow inventory, these uh, excess uh, foreclosures that are, are still waiting waiting in the wings to hit the market. Fred, one of the other big drivers out there are mortgage rates, because if we see a big pop in rates, you know, as a result of everything that is going on with the debt ceiling, obviously that makes homes less affordable, or maybe it makes people jump into the market because they think interest rates are on their way up. I better get in now before I can't, you know, get a good mortgage any longer with, you know, that isn't 7% or something. It, where do you think mortgage rates are headed? Nowhere. Really? I think we're flatlined on mortgage rates. Absolutely. I mean, with the all the debt ceiling debate doesn't impact year, you at all. It's the flavor of the week. They'll solve it somehow. I have no inside information, but it, it'll get done. I'm not really worried about that. The, the target in Washington is to get the debt down, and that was everybody's fear earlier this year. That oh my God, we're going to have this enormous amount of debt, and we have to put out all this paper, and rates are going to go up. Well. 
it seems to me they're solving that problem. That problem's over. What's going to drive mortgage rates up is demand uh, where we have to raise interest rates to slow an economy down. And I don't think there's anybody watching your station right now who says in the next year that we're going to have to do that. It'd be insane. Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for your insight. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for having me. About 20 minutes to go here. The Dow is starting to move a little bit lower like it did yesterday at this time. Down 76 points right now in the NASDAQ holding on to a fractional gain here. Pipeline profits up next. The CEO of Biogen tells us which drugs currently being developed will help fuel the company's earnings growth. And Amazon tops today's after the